What's going on, you guys? All right. Uh, AC Delco air conditioning compressor. Have a look at it here. Now this is actually a new old stock one. This is my original Um, lots of questions and complaints. I had some myself uh, because I'm, I'm replacing my old 30 year old compressor here. Um, what I have, <laughs> what's taken me several days of research. Let me take the little cover off here. Uh, anytime you are about to do air conditioning, Component replacements, make sure you keep them sealed until you're ready to actually do the work. Notice, you know, anything, anytime you buy something air conditioning related, even hoses and whatnot, they usually always come with some sort of plastic cover over every port. Keep them sealed until it's time to do the work. All right, let's take a look at something here between these two. Now this, um, this type of compressor is referred to as an R4. So that means it fits a bajillion different makes and models. I happen to have a 1990 Chevrolet K1500 pickup truck, but I know for a fact that this compressor fits a ton of different models. So don't worry about the specifics of what model I have here. I'm going to show you a couple things. We get her focused in here. Okay. Notice the old one versus the new one. The old one just had a very a flat surface with two, you know, large O-ring both of them basically the same. What I found out that they don't really make this style anymore. Unless you get a remanufactured one, which is, you know, of course, you can do that. Uh, I went, I actually got lucky and found a new old stock one, but this is the new style, which is called the step, uh, step port, step block, because this one here is a little higher up than this one here. And as well as the uh, the diameter of the hole is different from the two. Uh, you got this one is a three quarter inch where this one's a five eighths inch. Okay, but the issue going on is there are different heights. So, totally different from your old original compressor. Okay, that's a big confusion for a lot of people is, you know, why is it different and what do I do about it? Because I can't find this anymore. Fine, all right. Let's get rid of you. And when you order most of these kits, uh, like the hose kits and whatnot, you know, the new hose is not stepped. If you see it there, up those folks. Notice it is it is flat. See there, it's flat with two pilots. These are referred to the pilots. These little raised ridges here. Okay. Um, now the issue with that is this is basically to fit a wide range of makes and models. And when you get a AC Delco ceiling washer kit, here's an example of one here, 272-4887, called a seal washer kit. Sometimes it comes with your new compressor, sometimes it doesn't. And what you'll get with this ceiling washer kit, here's where the confusing part for some people, you get an assortment 
If you'll focus, there we go. You get an assortment of ceiling washers, which is that green, red, and yellow colored one. And then you'll get two little inserts, different, and they're different sizes, the little inserts are. All right. The reason for all of this is with the step design with the step design of this here, you're definitely going to have to deal with different thicknesses. Okay, let's see if I can describe this. If we can look at it at an angle here. Right? You've got a deeper side on the right, a shallower side on the left. Which means, in, ultimately, you want you know, your, uh, the block here of your suction discharge hose. You want it, ultimately, to be nice and flat across here once it's all assembled. Otherwise, of course, you risk a leak. All right, so that's why you're given these different thickness of washers and the instructions that come with the compressor, which are some, it is a little uh, confusing at first. For my particular application, I have to compare what sort of block do I have on my hose assembly, okay, which is this, of course. I have completely flat base with two little raised um, raised uh, pilots. They're called a short pilot, and the uh, the size of them. I don't know. I've got so many of these. They're only like four four millimeters or so high. Those little tips. Hold on. These little tips here, it's only about four millimeters thick, but they're both identical in every shape and form as far as uh, the diameter inside as well as the height of each thing. All right, so how in the world do we make that hose block fit in these two differently shaped and thick ports? We do this by looking at our instruction. The setup I have is this block is on the hose assembly. The compressor I have has a three quarter inch suction port, okay, which is you got a three quarters and a five eighths. Okay, so you know what you're looking at, and you see the S on there so that means I will need looking on down here here's a recommendation of what setup of these little assortment of washers and the little inserts here's the recommendation for my compressor I'll need the yellow and the green and the short insert All right. The yellow can only fit in the larger overall hole here. Right, of course it can't fit here. It wouldn't even fit inside that recessed area. Okay, so it fits only right there. Makes perfect sense, right? The green ceiling washer goes in the other hole. Okay, all good so far. Here's where we go to the next part. I need the short insert, which is this little guy here. Can, also came in the ceiling washer kit. So you, you come with a, come on focus. You get a tall one and a short one. Depending on what type of compressor and what type of hose setup you have, will determine which insert, if at all, you need. I need this one because it's going to make the hose block fit nicely inside here. It needs to be a nice snug fit. Okay? And on my car, or my truck rather, the assembly 
will go on. If we can get this, bear with me here. The assembly will be installed like this. See the hoses go downward. Okay, now yours may be different. The issue is though, is this, this port here that needs to go in, in here. So you take your little insert, which is this little guy here. Notice it has a little recessed area. It is going to be gently tapped in to this hole of the block of your hose assembly. Okay, you just gently, this is aluminum now, and so is this. So nothing is gonna, you don't have to gonna, you don't have to use a lot of force to do this. Take your little lightweight hammer, and you want it to tap in completely square and flush, and then it will eventually be, you know, all the way against the base of this little guy here. Which means then when you install the hose assembly, with the little insert correctly installed. As I drop everything, the hose assembly will then fit nice and snug on the right hand side here. It needs to be, you know, there needs not to be any, uh, any slackness or looseness to the fitment of the entire assembly. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. And it depends, of course, on which hose assembly you have, which compressor you have, but the instructions that come with it tell you if your hose assembly looks like this, which is mine, or does it look like this? Or does it look like this? It's got a little raised section as well as taller pilots. Or this has two different pilots in a raised section. Mine is completely flat with the two short pilots. Okay, which means I go with this setup here. And once you get the insert installed, you can then install the hose, you know, as normal. And you'll only tighten, you know, you'll tighten that center bolt so the whole thing snugs down nicely. You only tighten it down 25 foot pounds. So it's not like you're trying to, you know, be stretch, you know, the, the Incredible Hulk tightening this stuff down. It's these seals that do all the work as far as keeping this system sealed tightly. So don't go overboard in tightening it. You know, get you a torque wrench and when you put your bolt in the center with your block assembled, 25 foot-pounds is all they recommend. I And for some vehicles it is easiest to go ahead and install the hose with a compressor off the car and then put the compressor on because some people don't have a lot of room behind this area here once they get this the compressor installed so that you know your mileage may vary as far as which should you put in first the compressor or go ahead and put the hose assembly on the compressor and then install everything all right uh, also make sure you check to see if there is already any oil in your new compressor so you'll, you know, some people have a drain plug at the bottom of it. Some people have no drain plug. So you'll have to tip it upside down and see if any oil comes dripping out of it because it may not be the correct viscosity of oil. It may have just been shipped with oil in it to keep it lubricated. But you should go ahead and dump any oil out if there is any. Then put what's recommended for your compressor. Maybe that PAG 46, PAG 100, PAG 150. You know, it'll be, it can be different depending on what you have. Uh, and you should start fresh with the correct amount of oil, which is typically only about four ounces that you'll actually put in here, and then you'll actually rotate it around. You, know, you may have to get you a wrench on this here and actually rotate it uh, so that the compressor actually engages manually, so to speak, so that you can rotate uh, the, the fluid in there before you ever install it. All right, I know all that seems way out there for some of you, but... I actually struggled with this because there was no other instructions on the internet, you know, that sort of spoke in plain English. 
they assume that everyone installing these is a, you know, is a trained professional or something. I'm just some dude who's trying to save some money and work on my own truck. Which a lot of you are doing the same thing. Uh, one other thing, you'll notice this region right here. That is a plug that is in there when the, when the compressor is shipped to you. But of course, when you're installing it, you need to remove this plug and put in whatever uh, pressure switch belongs. You know, come on, focuser. Oh, for Pete's sake. Bear with me. Getting kind of dim in here so the focus doesn't want to work right. Hold on, there we go. Okay. Technical difficulty, so hang tight. All right, uh, for my particular model, I have to put this pressure switch into that chamber of the compressor. And the easiest way I've found to remove this clip, so you got a little clip right there that needs to be removed so that this plug can come out. I use teeny little funky pliers that have an itty bitty tip on the end of it there. Regular needle nose won't cut it. You know, it just won't get it done because this is such a small hole on this clip here. You gotta have something that's specially designed for such a thing. What I do, put her in right there with my blind eyes that I can't see, all right. Put her in here and then squeeze it together and then I'm using a pick to dig underneath the clip and be careful it doesn't go flying on you and then just pry it out of the slot. There's a slot in here and then it comes right out. But both of these make it easier than your little plug but you may need to pry it out, you know, with a little... Because it's in there pretty snug. You may have to work around, you know, the angles. Come on! So I can't get it going. Take your time and pull the whole plug out. There we go. Then your switch. And there's an O-ring in there also. Make sure there's an O-ring in it. You may have to put a little nylog oil on it. Then put your little switch in there and put the clip back in to hold it in place. All right. I know it sounds crazy to some of you, but there's a lot of people, myself included, who just could not make sense of those instructions because they were really, they're kind of confusing. So if you have a compressor like this, notice how those ports look in there versus your original one, which was just simple old O-rings with a flat surface. You have to do this with these funky little washers that'll come with they'll either come with the compressor or you'll have to order them and of course it depends on your make and model but uh, once again here's the there's the set that all this you know all these ceiling washers and little inserts all that came in Okay, well hopefully this will help somebody because I surely couldn't find anything on it on you know, on YouTube or the internet or anything, you know? No one really described this in good detail. Or at least detail that we regular dudes could just understand. I mean, it was, wow, I was like, why? How can this not be already out there for everyone to look at? You know, other than trying to figure it out on your own and, you know, if you've never done it before, how are you supposed to know? Hi, y'all. Well... We're about to do this. We're about to do an entire air conditioning install. I'm even about to do a uh, cooling fan on my condenser. 
on my 1990K1500. We got a whole bunch of stuff about to go on here. So keep checking our uh, our YouTube channel. You know, we're always up to some kind of project or whatever. If you got uh, other questions that I might be able to help you with, I don't know if I can help you, but if you got questions, just post a comment underneath the video here and I'll see if I can help you or send you a link to something or something like that. So anyway, y'all have a good day. We'll see, I'll see you.